I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this adorable teapot cozy. So cute and so simple. Just takes a half a yard of the outside fabric, lining fabric, and a half a yard of fusible fleece. Be sure to go to our homepage. At the very bottom, there'll be a link that says free downloads. Click that and you'll print off the teapot cozy diagram. There'll be four pages. Just make sure you line everything up and tape them together and it'll look just like this. Just cut your pattern piece out on the solid black line. And then you'll have your fabrics. And by the way, these are from the Welcome Home collection. And that's by Shabby Fabrics. That's our very first collection from Maywood Studio with many more to come. So it's a beautiful collection. We've chosen the teal rosebud colorway for the outside and the lining will be a beautiful shadow play again in a teal colorway. So we've cut our main fabric, our fusible fleece and our lining to 12 and a half inches square. And you'll do that twice. Each side of the tea cozy will need one of those little sandwiches. And you can quilt that if you want to. You could be using the friction pen to draw lines on there if you'd like and quilt it. That's completely up to you how you want to prepare your fabric. Now you'll of course put your pattern piece on and you can either just pin it in place. That's certainly one option and you can cut around that or you can use your friction pen because this will iron away and draw around it. That's your preference. We went ahead and cut that out ahead of time and that's what this is going to look like. And again, you'll be doing two of those. Now our tea cozy has a cute little piping, kind of a binding around it. And out of that half yard fabric, you'll be able to get both, both halves, um, out of that and you you could get a bias binding out of um, the lining fabric is what we use for the binding here you could do that it might be a little bit snug so if you do want to do a bias binding to go around that curve a little bit easier you might want to buy a little bit extra fabric than the half yard so that's what that looks like and we've sewn on our binding now if you do it with the fabric cut you only need two of those strips those instructions will be included on the free download as well um, but so it's about 39 to 40 inches of binding. So if you do do bias strips, just to have again that stretch around the corner, you might have to do multiple strips in order to achieve that distance. So about 40 inches of binding around each one. We just went ahead and started sewing the binding. We clipped around these corners right here. We kind of clipped in a little bit. That's if you're not going to do that bias binding. It just helped relieve some of the stress and we were able to go around that more easily. Now, when you come back around, sometimes people aren't sure how to finish binding. Our experience has been that there's a, lots of ways to do binding. I'm just gonna trim that off like this. And if you just fold that down and give a press, kind of make a 45 degree, that's a 45 degree angle right there, and give a press, then, okay, and so you lay that out and you just nest that in here like that. Works really, really well. And this is where I love to use the Wonder Clips. Rather than pinning, in the, in the day, I used to pin my binding on. Not anymore, I love these Wonder Clips. I don't poke myself, it's a much happier thing um, to go ahead and just clip that on like that and clip that in like this. And of course, you take that to the sewing machine and just close that. Um, and then you, to finish this off, you would just wrap around, as you would expect, clip, and either hand sew, or you could just go in by machine. If you do go by machine, start on this side, which is the outside, and just stitch in the ditch and you should catch that seam in the back. And for that purpose, I like to use two and a half inch binding strips, not two and a quarter inch binding strips, which I know some people like. Now, once you have your two halves together, okay, you're finishing them both the same way. With your friction pen again, I don't know if you can see it, we went and measured about an inch up from each side, like this. And we're just going to bring those two halves together you could just do a pin and let's take that to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew, definitely reinforce from here to about here on both sides and then we'll finish up our tea cozy. 
So I've sewn my two halves together. Again, it's just that one inch in the corners. And I'll take the little bit of heat and iron away that friction pen. Love that friction pen for that very reason. Now, um, you can, I'm gonna show you how to put this on the actual teapot. You can either make a ribbon that goes around the tea cozy with just some of that leftover lining fabric, binding fabric. We just, like an inch and a half, fold in half, fold in half, and just sew that. Or you could just use a pretty ribbon. It's up to you, but I wanna show you how it works. This is what it looks like right now. There's an opening down here. Okay, so you'll just set your teapot in there, right kind of right in the middle. You'll just bring the two halves up like this. You've got the spout out on one side and the handle on the other. And just kind of even it up, gather it up, and then you'll just come around here with your, again, either tie made with the extra fabric or a pretty ribbon. So that's all there is to making a pretty tea cozy from Shabby Fabrics.